Okay, so we look at the traditional view of the, the community. You have the three pillars, economy, environment, um, and society. And traditionally, we have dealt with these issues as being separate. Um, when you look historically over the past century, we have separated these things out as if they are um, sadly not related. It's only recently, it's only since the type of Brundtland um, systems thinking over the past 20, 30 years that people have uh, recognized that the traditional solution can actually um, cause problems. That, that if you wind up focusing only on economic growth and job creation, you can do that in a way that is going to be extremely harmful to, uh, for instance, your environment. Or if you, uh, uh, if you focus uh, only on the other side, the way that if you only focus on environment, you might uh, uh, be uh, impairing you know, cultural or, or societal uh, uh, traditions. So an important point is these piecemeal fragmented solutions also uh, are directly related to a lot of the um, the, the agendas in mobilizing opposing groups. Um, so rather than looking at things as a, as a system where you are looking to optimize solutions, you instead are mobilizing, uh, mobilizing agendas and mobilizing opposition. And too often we tend to focus on short-term benefits. Um, and that we could go into a long discussion about why that is, whether it's our current economic valuation models, whether it's because we have certain election and political cycles or uh, attention spans. There's a lot of reasons why we could talk about that. All right. Now, does anybody want to argue that uh, these things aren't interlinked? Uh, because certainly we have just uh, decades, if not centuries, of data showing that um, you can't play the old carnival game whack-a-mole with, the, uh, with these problems where you tackle one and then another one pops up. Um, now, this is the slide that I think is about as obvious as something can be, and it astounds me that this is not um, how many people consciously think about things. So, we know that our economy exists within society, to serve society. And society, of course, exists within the greater environment. You would think, <laughs> by listening to some of our discussions, that this was up for debate. That when the economy is uh, somehow viewed as being equal or more often superior to the society that it's supposed to serve, there's a great saying that I, I, I believe is uh, from Paul Hawken that um, markets are a miraculous tool, a terrible master, and an even worse religion. So you start thinking about, when we talk about market forces, the whole reason that these market forces exist is to serve the greater society. And society cannot exist without the natural capital, the natural resources, the, the, the uh, life-giving atmosphere that the environment writ large provides. So when we start talking about these relationships, which we are going to need to talk about in depth, we're going to be talking about, you know, this chemical produces this adhesive, produces this drug, and it doesn't make economic sense. I want everybody to always keep this in mind because, again, it astounds me at how, long, how often this relationship seems to be lost in the general discussion.